Hi everybody! Hi Rutre! Hey man! How are you doing? Pretty good, pretty good. Good to see you again in another of our science video. Please come a little bit closer. Uh, 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 uh. Today we want to talk about the science behind the X-Men series. So in X-Men we know that there are mutants and they have specific mutations that give them some kind of special abilities like flying, telekinesis, they're fast, they can breathe fire. I'm in. Just like in nature. And that's derived from what they call the X gene. So right. one of the themes in the story is that they might be the next step in the human evolution becoming something more. Basically the way that evolution goes is through mutation. Mutation. It is the key to our evolution. It has enabled us to evolve from a single-celled organism into the dominant species on the planet. Shut up. If something changes, if it's good, if you're stronger, if you're faster, better, happier, more productive. Odds are you'll eat more food, you'll have to procreate. Odds are that it will spread. But they are all you know, single instances, like each one of them has some special ability and they're just individuals. And evolution is actually also always at the level of populations, right? It's the study of how populations of a species change genetically over time, leading to a species evolving. So we really? define evolution just as a change in the frequency of heritable characteristics mm. over time, so it always acts at the population level. And as a result of that mutation, one of her two cubs was born with a white coat. The brown bear can be seen against the snow a mile away. The white bear prospers and passes on its own particular set of genes. This happens repeatedly. So it could be just like uh, the first tiny step, but we don't know if it will catch on and become evolution, right? It's right. just a mutation. So the, the classic example, which is kind of in the textbooks, mm. is that there used to be these moths, or they still exist, they're kind of light gray, mm. and there were some in the population that had darker wings, Biston betularia. I knew that. Of course, everybody knows that. Then the Industrial Revolution happened, and there was much more soot in the environment. And so the soot? frequent... Yeah, it's like the, from uh, smokestacks. Okay. It's, it's like okay. There always used to be, at a very low uh, frequency, darker ones. But as the environment got darker, that trait spread. So it's a camouflage thing. I was me, but now like new mutations, mm. uh, oftentimes they're very small, right, but sometimes they're really like dramatic changes. Just like that? Well, it, it has to have started with, with the first individual, and that individual may have been really rather different. And so some of the genes that regulate the development of these segments okay. at certain points in evolution have duplicated and leading to really different classes of organisms, right? So, for example, to go from uh, six legs to eight legs, some it's genes... It's a big change. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, and it's a discrete change, right? It's not like a little bigger or a little this or that. Right. By evolution. This process is slow, normally taking thousands and thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. Which, which is kind of like uh, the X-Men, right? Right, so it's a really so drastic, boom, drastic, drastic, boom, new thing. The, the interesting thing, though, with your example, is that they're not born and immediately they have this ability. It kicks in usually during uh, puberty, so it's kind of dormant before that. It's not like an extra leg. It's something that has to be unlocked. It has to way. somehow be activated. Okay, uh, so what could be the science behind that? A lot of traits that only develop in puberty in animals, yeah. let's say, like the manes of the lion. Right. And it also kind of depends maybe on the circumstances that you're in. So, for example, really? not every male gorilla becomes a silverback, right? He has to be in uh -huh. this dominant social position to really become that phenotype. And I then and his then back becomes silver when he has that uh, status? It, yeah, it, it, it coincides with, uh, with uh, acquiring the status and you're already well on the way, <laughs> yes. <laughs> In the story, those abilities, it's not like a silverback, okay, you have it. It can be developed. This, it's like any other muscle in the body. You can control it. Try higher frequency, much 
higher. <laughs> and also it can activate without your control during moments of uh, stress and anger and all kinds of stuff. Yeah. Is there any scientific uh, equivalent? Sometimes changes in, in shape of an organism really coincide with maybe external circumstances. There is no other species on the planet that responds as quickly and as dramatically to the good times as the desert locust. Normally, it takes four weeks for hoppers to become adults. But when the conditions are right, as now, their development switches to the fast track. Something in the environment that triggers okay. this change. So these drastic changes where all of a sudden there's really a new form or a new shape, um, it's sometimes jokingly called hopeful monsters. Right, so something happens that creates kind of a, a monstrous shape. And it might turn out well, it might spread, or it might just end, end with that weird, freaky individual. Okay, for example. So here's, an, here's a really neat uh, recent example. So there's these um, birds, I think they're uh, cardinal finches in North America. Okay. And they're normally red. And uh, for the males, that's part of their ornamentation right. to be attractive to the females. They play baseball also. Also. Um, but now there was one individual this spring who was more orangey, yellowish. Okay. Which is, it looked really different. It's so like a mutation. It's a mutation. The mutation is just an accidental change in the DNA. When the DNA is expressed, right. then in this case, it's more like a yellow finch. So now the question is, do the girls like it? He's, <laughs> he's hopeful to see if this is gonna work out well for him. It's a male, it's a male bird. It's a male. So if the girls like it, then it will spread and we will see more white cardinals? Uh, yellow. Yellow, yellow. sorry. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that might happen. That yeah. was racist of me, I think. Uh, well, it's I think so. oh. And to my mutant brothers and sisters out there, I say this. No more hiding. No more suffering. You have lived in the shadows and shame and fear for too long. Okay, so if it's an X gene inherited from the parents, that would be weird because a mutant uh, person in the story can be born from non-mutant parents. Well, it's yeah, a, little bit, a little bit weird. Yeah, the, the story's a little bit weird because so they refer to a single X gene and you know some genes might have a couple of different actions at the same time. Okay. But the notion that the same gene in different individuals leads to these really different... Yeah, nah. that, that doesn't make any sense. No. Yeah. Debunked! X-Men debunked! Yeah. I could ask you about your son, William, who you were thinking about, which is very nice. But I think I'd rather ask you about the Jupiter missiles America are currently placing in Turkey. He's a goddamn spy! You brought a goddamn spy into this facility! In the story, this is a threat. Sure. We are humans. We don't have any special powers. Right. Here comes human who have, humans who have mutated. They're bigger, stronger, faster, smarter, more abilities. Yeah. So this is twofold. First of all, there's something inherent in us. We fear the different, right? Mm -hmm. The other. But also we feel that uh, we are under threat from a superior race. So politics and genetics and mutations, that's something that has been uh, linked uh, for some time. So even if there's differences that don't really, are just sort of superficial, like skin color, right. which is just adaptation to the intensity of the sunlight, mm -hmm. over time that's become imbued with all sorts no. of political connotations, uh, racism. No, no. no. Yeah. Racism is dead. Obama was president. I belong to this group, and this group is better than that group. Therefore, at e each individual right. treats each uh, uh, individual of the other population right. like shit. Right. And also, I heard, I heard this quote, great quote, that you should be skeptical towards any ideology that says that your group is the best group. Ah, just, I'm white, and this is just a coincidence that this is the best group. It just to be the, yeah. We Same. are the you genius that drives it. Bing, bing, bong, bong, bing, bing, bing. You know what that is, right? 
and anyone who stands in our way will suffer the same fate as these men you see before you. Racism based on skin color is really also something that grew out of circumstance. The different European nations or, or groups of people sort of considered each other different races. And then in the colonies, oftentimes, although maybe one colony might have been, let's say, Dutch or English or okay. whatever, there would have been other Europeans there as well. And all of a sudden there's like this sort of circling of the wagons. Right. Of, okay, oh, we're all white. Yeah. They, are more, they are a lot more different than us. Yes. yes. And so that became a tool to subjugate right. others right. and exploit. Also, we could see that, that at the beginning of, uh, of the colonization of, the, of North America, you had also white slaves and black slave owners. Yes. You know, from the perspective of uh, evil colonialism, that's no good at all, because then you might have poor whites who more identify themselves with poor blacks yes. just on socioeconomic yes. grounds. This is dangerous. That's no good to keep this evil system in place. So right. there needs to be some sort of, no, no, we're all white. No, no, no okay. Yeah. You might be poor, but you're better but than this guy. Right. Yeah. This always works. Always yeah. works. So, so going back to the story, basically here, there's a very visceral fear that we humans, we fear that these superior creatures will treat us the same way that we treated inferior creatures in the, in, the, in the past. Humanity has always feared that which is different. Well, I'm here to tell you, to tell the world. You're right to fear us. We are the future. We are the ones who will inherit this earth. You, you do not replace us! us. You, you do not replace us! What did we do to all the other humanoids? So Maybe they just left of their own accord. <laughs> Uh, well, different things happened. Uh, uh, yada, yada, yada. They're, they're no longer here. We like watching whatever sports and seeing people who have the same basic abilities that we have. Walking, running, whatever, shooting a basketball. But they just do it so much better than we're like in awe. Yeah. But if you say Bolt had like a third leg, that we, hey, 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 come on, this is not fair. <laughs> now this, we're afraid. So they have this kind of third leg and this is, could be very disruptive uh, to society. Socially, this is very dangerous, yeah, very problematic. I guess the, the theme of us fearing being replaced, of course, we see all the time, also with like Machines. AI yeah, and machine yeah, learning, yeah, that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Jews, people are very afraid that the Jews will replace them. <laughs> <laughs> Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! Jews will not replace us! And so this enhancing of our abilities, there's actually some trend towards that transhumanism right. where you might somehow improve your own abilities through right. technology. Aging could be stopped and even reversed. Enhancements could dramatically raise our IQs and make us stronger and fitter. We might even be able to leave our fragile bodies behind and upload ourselves to computers, living forever in virtual worlds. So that is not really an evolutionary change because, of course, your children are not going to be born with a chip in their head. Uh, okay. Except maybe we're heading towards a future where we also do genetic changes that are actually passed on. Right, right? like curing diseases and stuff like For that. For example. Getting rid, of, getting rid of a gene that could lead to cancer. Right. And then yeah. you would pass that, uh, whatever, to your children and they will be less likely to get cancer. Right. When what replaces us would be so much better. It would be like wishing children never grew up or that Homo erectus never evolved into Homo sapiens. These things might start by with curing diseases. Right, benevolent uh, yeah, it's thoughts. Yeah, who could be against it. Yeah. But if it becomes a class thing where rich people can enhance their lineage and others cannot, wow. that is of course going to be very disruptive. Now we're going to take the tiki torches. Exactly. <laughs> they will not replace no, us. They no, they will not. No, no, no. no. I, I found myself agreeing with Nazis. This is, uh, <laughs> this is interesting. <laughs> we find a common ground, Nazis. <laughs> That's why I prefer Stalin. So I'm now here in uh, Tel Aviv, uh, yes, shooting these yes, videos. Yes, it's are. very nice. Um, but that costs a little bit of money. 
<laughs> and um, so it would be nice to make this possible again, yes. or maybe other guests if I turn out to be kind of lame. <laughs> um, and so for that, there's Patreon money needed. <laughs> so don't just click like and subscribe. Also, pay. <laughs> it's a patreon.com slash yeah. God Academy. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Rutger. Had a great time as usual. Thank you. I'll see you on our next science video, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.